always rise. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the gospel reading that Pastor Adi just read for you. I share with you today at verse 16. Jesus said, Do not make my father's house a den of robbers. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. In the spring of 1894, the Baltimore Orioles traveled to Boston to play a baseball game against the Boston Bean Eaters. Yep, that's right. Back then, the Boston baseball team was called the Boston Bean Eaters. Well, the game got really intense when the Boston third baseman, Tommy Tucker, slid into third base and the Oriole third baseman, John McGraw, kicked him in the face. Well, immediately, players from both teams crashed out onto the field, and they started fighting one another. The fighting spread into the grandstands. Pretty soon, the fans were fighting against one another, and things got so bad that one of the fans lit the grandstands on fire, and the whole, the whole stadium burned to the ground. This all happened because one baseball player got angry with another baseball player. You know, when you think about it, people do some really damaging things when they become angry, don't they? I mean, this happens all the time. I read some statistics recently that said that over a seven-year period, road rage resulted in 12,000 160 injuries and 218 murders on our nation's highways. Wow, that's a lot of anger, isn't it? And people, they don't only hurt one another physically when they get angry, but many times people do psychological damage to themselves. The psychotherapist Sigmund Freud says that depression is anger turned inward. Depression is anger turned inward. Do you remember all of the hatred and the violence that took place in Northern Ireland a while back? Well, amazingly, the suicide rate went down during this time. Why was that? Well, it's because when you can express your anger physically, you don't turn the anger inward on yourself. And so it was the most peaceful county in Northern Ireland that had the most suicides happen when all this was going on. Sigmund Freud said this happens all the time with so-called nice people. He said nice people get depressed because they don't know what to do with their anger. Now, they don't want to strike out and hurt someone, so they turn their anger inward on themselves. And there's a lot of evidence that this then causes higher blood pressure. It causes ulcers. It causes some forms of cancer. Wow. Anger can do a lot of damage, can't it? Now, does that mean that it's always wrong to get angry? No, not at all. Anger, like many of our emotions, is a gift from God. It can be either positive or it can be negative. Anger is not always a sin. Just look at the Word of God before us today. Jesus was really upset about what was going on in the church of his day. Jesus was really angry about what was happening in the church. You see, there were deceitful money changers working in the church. Now let me explain what a money changer was back then. A money changer would change the Roman coins into Jewish coins. And this is the reason they needed to do that. 
the Roman coins had the image of Emperor Caesar on it. And when that image of Emperor Caesar was on the coin, the Jewish people looked at that as idolatry, as worshiping a false god. And there was no way they were going to put a Roman coin in the offering plate in their church. That would dishonor God. So the money changers would come and they would exchange the Roman coins for Jewish coins, which then the people could naturally put into the offering plate to honor God in their church. All sounds great, right? Except for this. The money changers, they overcharged the people when they exchanged the coins. They cheated the people. And to make matters worse, they sold animals that people would sacrifice in the church. And they overcharged people for the animals too. They cheated them there as well. And this all made this worship place a place of crooked business instead of a house of worship. Well, this made Jesus, as you can imagine, really angry. This was supposed to be a place to worship God, not to cheat and steal from people. And so what Jesus did is he turned the money changers' tables over. So coins were just flying all over the church. And then Jesus got a whip, and he drove the money changers, and he drove the animals out of the church. The people were all shocked. They had never seen Jesus this angry before. But this anger of Jesus here was not a bad thing. It was a good thing. Jesus was angry that his church had been turned into a den of robbers. Many times, anger can be a good thing. Martin Luther once said, when I am angry, I pray better. Hmm. The slave trade in Great Britain came to an end because a man named William Wilberforce got angry. He got angry that people were being sold like animals, and he stopped the slave traders. We see things like this all the time. Let me give you a very simple example. Do the unwanted spam emails that you constantly get, do they bother you? Do those unwanted spam emails make you angry? A few years ago, a group of people got together because they were upset. They were getting all these unwanted spam emails from a man by the name of Alan Rolski. And so you know what they did? They found Alan's home address. And they found his email address, and they got his phone number. And they posted them all over hundreds of websites. And so Alan now was bombarded with what they were bombarded with. Unwanted spam emails. Unwanted mail. Alan complained, the people are harassing me. Well, they were. And he was too. And it wasn't long after that Alan stopped sending those unwanted spam emails. Sometimes, sometimes not getting angry is more of a sin than getting angry. There are times when we Christians need to get angry. We should be angry when children are killed in our schools. We should be angry when there's sexual abuse of our children. We should be angry when terrorists kill innocent people. But you know what we also should be angry with? We should also be angry that so many people in our world today are going to hell. We should be angry about that. Do you ever get angry about that? Do you ever get angry that so many people don't know Jesus and they're not going to heaven? We should. Jesus didn't want anyone to ever go to hell. Jesus wanted everyone to go to heaven. 
Jesus wanted us to tell everyone we can about him. Jesus wants us to tell everyone that he died on a cross and rose from the dead to forgive our sins, to overcome death for us, to give us an eternal life with him in heaven through our faith in him. Jesus wants us to be passionate about people not going to heaven. So, what do we learn from this word of God before us today? Well, anger is not always a sin, is it? Even Jesus got angry when things got really bad. Sometimes it's worse to not be angry when things are bad. So, speak out against injustices and sinful behavior that's around you. Stand strong on the truths of God's word. Become passionate that more people get to know about Jesus so that more people can be in heaven. Look for ways to share Jesus with the people around you. Invite people to come here to your church where they will always hear about Jesus and about heaven. Be a kind and loving and caring Christian to the people who are around you. Let the people around you get a little picture of Jesus when they see you. You can make a big difference here in this sinful world. Maybe getting a little angry once in a while can help you to be a better Christian witness in this world. God bless us all as we actively live Christian lives to serve him. Amen. Let's now stand and join together in the next song of praise. Amen.